without further ado, I think we bring on the guy who literally wrote the book on trout and salmon fishing. And that's and that was like I said last night, that was kind of strategic. It's like yeah, if we can get Dan to come on first, that makes like total sense to me. All the so. sense in the world. So let's bring on Captain Dan Keating. There he is. Good morning. Good morning. Hey guys, thanks for including me. Yeah, I appreciate you making time to come on. And uh you're the first guest ever on the virtual Great Lakes fishing show. Wow. <laughs> it's an honor. Be before we before we get into the the meat and potatoes, uh, I understand that congratulations are on order. Uh, you're a, you're a grandfather now, is that correct? Yeah, thank you. Our oldest daughter Rebecca and her husband Noah gave birth to a, a little boy this week. So, congratulations. That's that's awesome. And and thank her for not having the baby today. So, <laughs> oh, that would have been rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That you know, so just from a pure selfish point of view, I'm like, okay, well, this is, this has worked out really good. So, yeah. No, it was good timing for them. So they just came home last night, got the weekend to settle into having that little life there with them now. So pretty cool. Right. Well, congratulations again and, and give everyone our best. And that's that's awesome. So, yeah, so let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, why we're having you on this morning. You got a new book out and we both had a chance to take a look at it. It's called Big Water Wisdom, the Complete Trolling Q&A Guide and Captain Dan, tell us a little bit about how, how you came up with the idea for this book. Yeah, this was really my wife's idea. And this book is, you know, it's my fifth book. Um, and this is really the culmination of I've been fishing. I've been, you know, I chartered full time for 36 years, been fishing on Lake Michigan since I was a little kid. Um, the fish above my head, that king, the reason it's there is I caught that out of a canoe when I was a kid. Um, so... This book is really the natural outflowing of just years of on the water. And, you know, charter fishing is different because you have to catch fish morning and afternoon. You have to do it in the spring, the summer, and the fall. So I've gotten to learn a lot about the um, characteristics of the fish, how the lakes respond to different weather systems, the currents, um, and, and just what the fish do during the day. I've also gotten the opportunity to learn how to become more efficient with how I set lines, um, how you run stuff, how you fight a fish, how you boat a fish, how you stay on a school of fish or get back on them. So this book really contains a lot of that, that gritty detail on, on really how to be successful. Um, it's also very different because it's structured as a question and answer book, which again was my wife's suggestion. And um, it has over 500 um, questions. And some of the questions are pretty common questions. And some are a little more complicated questions. Um, so it, it's a different way of learning. And, you know, most guys, we approach, we approach fishing often by the question. We're asking a question. Um, where should I fish right now? Um, what lures should I use? How far should I set them down? Hmm, the fish quit biting. Should I go look for new fish? What not? So that's that's the approach on how it dives into the meat and potatoes of, of everything we need to catch salmon and trout. When when you sent me the book last week, Dan, you know, I, I promised I said I would I would read it before today, right? So I started that. No way. There, there's so much there. So every page you turn to, whether you're reading it in order or just opening the book. It's like, yeah, I've asked that question before. And for me, which I'm very much a weekend warrior, I don't, I'm not on the water continuously like you were or like captains are and things like that. These, the questions of, of doubt, am I doing the wrong, you know, what should I be doing that it's ever present with me if I'm not, not catching fish, right? So it was interesting because as I start going through the pages, I'm like, yep, ask that question. Yep, there, know that one. I mean, where it's like, um, that's, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to when I can actually get through it and and kind of commit some of those to memory, so. Oh, great, yeah. Yeah, and it, you know, it it's structured so that you can read it straight through. I mean, you can go from page one all the way to the end, but or it's logically cut up into nine different chapters from a beginner section to tackle, to lures, to the different tactics we use, to, the environment, um, characteristics of the fish and whatnot. So it's kind of designed to be like a encyclopedia for salmon fishing. 
So if, if, if a guy, and I understand most guys doing this do not get to fish every day, you know, so the, you know, they look forward to when they get to be on the water. Right. So you can keep it on the boat is almost a guide. Like, okay, uh, yeah. lures, so how do I pick lures in the middle of the day? That's, at .com? Go to that chapter, find your question. Boom. Answer. I'm, I'm writing that down and keep it on the boat right now. Cause that, 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 like that can go on the rod. That's easy to go on the rod locker where, uh, uh, yeah. One of the things I like about it, and, and, and don't take this the wrong way, but I, I call it a bathroom book because you can go in there and read it for 10 minutes and then come back, you know, the next time you're visiting in there and read it for 10 minutes again, because like you say, everything is chunked up in there. And I think, you know, as we're in this 2021 world and all of our attention spans are, at least mine anyway, is thinning, I don't, I'm not going to sit down and read a book for two hours. But the cool thing about this is, you can go in, you can read a little bit and then put it down and come back. And it's not like you got to go back and review everything you read. It's just, it's in chunks that are really easily digestible. So it's, it's almost like stew too, right? Yeah, that, that's a great observation, Chris. It is bursts of information and that's how our minds go. And I'm going to take the bathroom book as a compliment because for a lot of, a lot of us, we're so yeah, busy. You know, we like, don't so we get in there. It would be kind of a, a little cringy. <laughs> Yeah. I'll be full of cringy moments today. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's yeah. So, so was that was that a was that a strategy? To, I mean, did, when you did this, did, was that was that something you intended, or did it just kind of work out that way? I mean, no. having a book, I don't know how that comes out of your out of your mind, you know. Oh, it was a strategy. It was definitely. It was. Um, okay. You know, I've done a lot of seminars, um, run a, a zillion charters, um, and guys are always asking questions. Um, it's great in a seminar because you can do an all-day salmon school and then just the hands go up with questions, 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 because this is, we've made this fishery so complicated. So, and then with today with everyone, you know, with uh, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, the 24-hour news cycle, you know, we just get bursts of information. So this was intended to be bursts of information, easy to digest, and um, you know, hopefully, guys will hang on to things better that way. Dan, right now it's it's March, and there are some guys getting out on the water, but everybody I think is in kind of get ready for the season mode. What what should people be doing right now to prepare for? getting ready, getting their boats ready and just getting themselves ready to go fishing this, this spring. Okay, guys, if you're married or have a significant, significant other, spend, lots, where this of is going. spend time, lots of time with them right now. So when you think <laughs> that the boat is hot and that's cool. Is that in the book? It should be, it should be, the, it should be page one. So good idea. Uh, there's so many things that are not in the book. That's just like, there's another <laughs> book already on, on the horizon, but no, spend time with your, uh, your significant other so that you can go fishing. Um, no, one of the things that I like to do this time of year is tackle. Um, I mean, I've got, like, I just brought in some boxes by me now, but I try to get really organized now, you know, at home before you're out on the water, cause you'll get on the water and you know, it'll get really confusing fast. So everything is really organized. Um, I break up my spoons by size, so I'll have I'll have spoon boxes. You know, this is just you know generic spoon box, but all of my boxes are labeled. And of course, I just ran down to the basement and grabbed a box without a label on it. But they're all labeled with the brand of spoons, like Moonshine. So I would have a Magna Moonshine box. Um, I would have a UV box, a UV Super Slim box, uh, whatnot. So that when you're on the water and you're looking for something, you know right where to go for it. Um, flies, also very organized. Um, and one of the things that, that helped me not to get disorganized or confused on the water is when I start the spring fishing out, I wouldn't put everything on my boat because the way you fish in the spring is often different than the way you fish in the summer or the fall. So especially for guys who are recreational fishing and not doing it all the time, the stuff you want to put on your boat first is the stuff you're going to use in spring. Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, plenty yeah. of time to put that summer gear on the boat. So you're not got, don't have too much stuff as you're kind of working out the cobwebs. Captain Dan, we're starting to get some, a lot of questions actually on uh, Facebook and YouTube right now. Here's one that's uh, asked specifically to you and it's from Andy Munden on YouTube. And he's asking if you were heading out on the Lake Ontario solo 
and could only fish two rods, what approach would you take and how would you change this as the day progresses? What time of year? Ooh, what time of year, Andy? Let's say, let's say May, since we're heading into that, that time of year. Okay, so you can only run two rods and it's May and you're by yourself. I would say if you're fishing in shallow water and it's first thing in the morning and let's say you're in shallow water targeting brown trout, uh, possibly coho, I would probably run a, a diver, like a, a deeper diver and a mono trolling board or a segmented lead core board out off the side, depending on um, how deep water you're fishing in. You know, our, my, my experience with spring is that some springs you're going to get the best fishing from the beach out to about 30 feet of water and other springs, the fish will be further offshore. So if you're going to be offshore then chasing, um, chasing um, kings or lake trout, then you're going to want to get your baits down probably, not right on the surface. So that would be, I would start with a diver and a downrigger first thing. Very good. Uh, all right. We've been getting some questions about bait fish. And uh, one person wants to know, this looks like it's uh, Bill Kellerman wants to know about the alewife population. A number of years ago, they thought it was crashing. Has it come back? And then we've also got a question asking about uh, significant changes in fish patterns as different bait fish populations ebb and flow. Uh, is your prime window of time for multi-species anglers new to the salmon game? Okay, well, let's do the first question uh, as far as the bait fish population. Um, the Great Lakes are incredibly resilient. Um, I started chartering legally in 1983, started fishing in 1972, and we've really seen ups and downs um, throughout that fishery. And the lakes seem to rebound. Some years are better than others. Um, last year on Lake Michigan, the kings were bigger than we've seen in a long time. And they were super healthy. Um, everything was healthy. Steelhead were healthy. Um, lake trout are getting huge. So, you know, I I can't say how many alewives there are, but the DNR tells us that's all King Z. Um, I would debate that, but that is probably their preferred forage. And there must be plenty of alewives because they were getting awfully big. Um, I, I know guys that are fishing in the southern basin of Lake Michigan, and I've seen coho pictures all winter, and there are some really healthy cohos um, that didn't get as large as they are this year eating just bugs. As far as like Lake Ontario goes, that's the bottom end of the food chain. I mean, all the Great Lakes are flowing out through Lake Ontario, so Lake Ontario has a much healthier um, bottom end of their food chain because they're just more washing into that lake. So... I personally think the alewives, while they may not be as many as there used to be, I think there's going to be enough alewives that we're going to have a solid fishery. Um, and my gut feeling is that this year is going to be really good for silverfish on both Ontario and Lake Michigan. Um, I know I've seen pictures of guys catching cohos on Lake Superior through the ice. So I'm sure they're, they're in boats. Uh, they were out yesterday. I mean, the ice blew away from shore and, and there's, there's guys out. So yeah. Yeah. And what was the second question, Chris, or the second part of that question? Yeah, so the second part of the question, is there a prime window of time for multi-species anglers new to the salmon game? Oh, prime time for multi-species anglers new to the salmon game. Is the, uh, is the question coming from a Lake Ontario or a Lake Michigan person? Unclear. Unclear. Okay. Let's say, let's say Lake Michigan. Versus okay. Boy, multi-species May is a great month for multi-species because you've still got um, you still got a lot of cold water around. You've got the fish are the fish are coming out of their winter patterns. They're hungry. They're aggressive. So you can find steelhead right up on the surface um, in the southern uh, third of Lake Michigan. You can also find coho there. Um, you've got your kings. They're getting active um, during May, and then lake trout. You can find them anytime. So I, I would have to say May. Or then again in July, possibly early August, um, is also a good multi-species time as well. Very good. Let's talk a little bit about some of your other books, Dan. Uh, we've been talking some fishing here. Let's get back and let, let people kind of know what you've got out there. Uh, we talked about the the Big Water Wisdom, the complete guide, the Q&A guide that you just put out. But how about some other books? What are some uh, other things that people should look at if you're thinking about gaining some knowledge this year? 
Yeah, Chris. Uh, let me just start at the beginning. The first book um, is Great Lakes Salmon and Trout Fishing, The Complete Trollers Guide. I call it the blue book. This is, it's the oldest book. It is the most basic of the books. It's really simple. I've had, um, over the years, I've had, I mean, I've had literally guys who would get the book at Amazon and they would sit there in their bass boat reading this book, rig their boat up, and then they would go fishing and catch a limit, you know, a 10 fish, two man limit of fish on Lake Michigan. So if you're just starting out, Blue Book is the way to start. You had more hair then. What's that? You had more hair then. You know, don't start. I, you know, I, mean, I, I got my hair cut for this today since this is a oh, new okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go and on. we were actually discussing, should we just shave my head? That was the conversation with the girl who cuts my hair. So. I'm sorry. I, uh, you know, peanut gallery. No, no. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> and yes, the hair, the hair is going away. But, and then the next book is Heating on Kings. This is uh, 256 pages of everything about King salmon. So if you want to get inside my head on what I think about how I approach King salmon fishing, this is the book for you. Um, having said that, um, we, after we made the book, we decided that some guys don't want to read. So we need a video. So there are, uh, there's a Keating on Kings DVD part one, part one, and then part two. Um, it's basically a visual of the Keating on Kings book. Part one is more entertaining. Part two is is, is more uh, more in depth, more to sink your teeth into. Um, next book then is the Red Book: Great Lake Salmon and Trout Fishing Essential Tactics and Seasonal Strategies. I haven't figured the camera thing out yet. Um, <laughs> this is a multi-species book. Um, this was uh, two books ago, and this is a really good, solid book. It gives you, it takes you through a typical season. And it talks about the different ways to find uh, steelhead and catch them, cohos, kings, brown trout, uh, lake trout, and whatnot. Um, very easy book to read as well. And then the final book is Angling Life, which is really more about life than fishing. Kind of uses fishing as a metaphor to look at life. So that's the whole group of books. That's some great stuff. we got a couple more questions coming in. We've got a few more minutes, Dan. So uh, here's one from Dale to what are Dan's favorite and always out color spoons for Lake Michigan? What are my favorite spoons for Lake Michigan and colors? Yep. Well, you know, um, it's hard to, you know, every year it seems like there's different spoons that just take over and dominate. And so this year's hot spoons, we may not know what they are until we get out and fish. Um, but having said that, over the years, there's a few spoons that just seem to work no matter what, no matter what's going on. Um, so for the moonshines, that would be the green flounder pounder, the regular green flounder pounder. Um, actually, last year we had some of the best king fishing out of North Point that we've had in years, and that was the star performer. Um, another really solid moonshine, that was the regular green flounder pounder, is the... Um, Shelly Snack, which is an RV moonshine. That's my other favorite moonshine. Um, those two right there. Um, now, if it's if it's foggy, then the orange flounder pounder comes into its own dimension if you're facing fog. Um, some other spoons, um, the Super Slim and the Stinger and the um, UV Green Dolphin. That is a solid spoon that if a guy doesn't know what to run, that's a spoon to put on your line. Um, the the UV Blue Dolphin Super Slim is also another solid spoon if you don't know what to what to run. Um, and then as far as for steelhead go, I would have to say the last few years, the the UV spoons, both this the Super Slims and the Stingers, in um, a combinations of golds, reds, and silvers, they make a lot of different patterns. So, um, but getting that UV in there is really important for steelhead fishing. We're starting to run out of time. We'll just one more question from the audience. That's from Kurt Lucenor. Fewer salmon in the water, more lake trout. How can we more effectively target lake trout? Hmm. How can we more effectively target lake trout? Um, Kurt, read this book right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, seriously, lake trout. Um, lake trout, for some guys, it's the easiest fish to catch. And for other guys, it is the hardest fish to catch. So since the water has cleared up in the, in the Great Lakes, especially in Lake Michigan, lake trout behave a little differently. You still have your lake trout. I'm going to go through this fast because we're running out of time. You have your lake trout that sit right on the bottom. 
You have another group of lake trout that suspend and they just roam around. The bottom oriented lake trout, um, you have to know where they hang out. One of the biggest keys is fishing around either a clay bottom or a rocky bottom. So on Lake Michigan, there's not really a lot of rock or clay compared to muck. So finding the areas where there's clay, finding the areas where there's rock, fishing those areas. Then when the trout are on the bottom, again, I'm gonna go fast through this. Um, and you know, in the salmon schools, we spend like an hour on this if, if guys want to. But for getting the bottom bounce right on the clay, you can rub the bottom. But there's almost an art to how you get your lures bouncing right on the bottom. You can do it with a downrigger weight. You can do it with a, uh, a, a one pound or a 20 ounce lead ball on wire line, or you can do it with the Magnum divers. With the downrigger weights, it's kind of easier, but you need a heavy weight. So you want to use at least a 15 pound downrigger weight to get it down there. Magnum Metals makes a 25 pound downrigger weight, which makes fishing the bottom super duper easy. Um, but it's, it's just getting that tap just right and speed, highly sensitive for speed on lake trout. You almost need your throttle guy just playing with that speed till you dial right into them. Awesome. One more question, and that is if people want to find out more about you or where they can get your book, where do people find the books? Dan, this is obviously a lot of people looking for knowledge and getting ready for the season. Yeah, this is a great time to get ready. And uh, the more you know now, guys, the more prepared you're going to be when you get out there. And in all of our books and DVD, DVDs, they don't just give you hot lures. They certainly make suggestions, but they teach you how to look at the water, how to read it, how to adjust, and to make decisions, you know. So, um, but you can find all of our stuff on Amazon or on my website, which is uh, CaptainDanKeating.com. Dan, thank you immensely for being our very first guest. Well, thanks for having me, and I hope everybody has a great season this year, and we have lots of calm season in front of us. All right. Take care, Dan. Thanks. Thank you.